Shalom Chaverim. Today, I'm going to tell you the story of Hanukkah. Why do we celebrate this holiday? And where does, this, where does it come from? So, a long, long time ago, in Israel, the Jewish people had been conquered. That means a new army had come and taken over everything. This was the Syrian Greek army, and they were kind of taking over everything. And they were led by a man named Antiochus. Chus. It already sounds like a bad name, right? And Antiochus' job was to take over everything and make everybody act like they're Greek. So he came into the land of Israel and he started making rules. And these weren't fair rules. These were rules like, you can't keep Shabbat anymore. And all the Jews said, no, but we love Shabbat. What about challah and matzah bo soup? And he said, nope, no more Shabbat. And he said, you can't have bar mitzvahs anymore or brit milahs. You can't wear a kippah. You can't learn Torah. You can't have, kiss the mezuzah on the door. You can't do any of these things that make you Jewish. You have to act just like a Greek. Now, some of the people said, well, this guy is pretty scary. Like, I'm, I'm nervous. I don't want to get in trouble. So I'll just, I'll just act like a Greek and I'll just do all the Greek things. And, you know, we'll go to this big bath and we all took baths together and we'll um, eat lots of grapes and we'll, we'll lie down on the couch. And they're like, that's what we'll do. We're not going to get in trouble. But some of the people said, well, hey, wait a minute. You can't tell me who to be. You can't tell me what I, I do as a person. These are things that I love to do and they don't hurt anybody. But Antiochus had a really strong army. Um, and the army is made up of lots and lots of soldiers and they all had big shields and spears and they were very good fighters. And he just swept into Israel and he got to Jerusalem and he, which was the capital, it's like Washington DC of Israel. And he just started breaking things and destroying things. And he went to the temple, which was the most special building in all of Israel. It was where all of the Jewish people went when they wanted to talk to God or give something special and say thank you. And he went in there and he just trashed it. So he broke everything and he knocked things over and he even let pigs run around inside. So it was like a pigsty. So imagine like your favorite room in your house and then pigs are living there for a really long time. It was really, really dirty. So his soldiers went into this town called Modi and they gathered everybody in the, in the middle of the town. They said, everybody come here, everybody come here. You all have to come here. And then they said, we want you to make a sacrifice to the Greek gods. And the Jewish people don't really do that. They don't like to sacrifice to, to other things. So they were like, mm, no, we don't want to do that. And the Greek guys took their, their, their spears and their, like, their swords and they said, you better do it. We're going to make you do it. And so one person was like really scared and they were like, okay, okay, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, please. I'm sorry, I'll do it. And then this very brave man who's named Matitiahu, and he was the priest of the land. So he was like a rabbi, he was really important. And he stood up and he said, no, we will not do this. And the soldiers looked at this, you know, man, and they're like, you're one guy, what are you gonna do? And then his five sons stood up behind him and they said, no, we're not gonna do it. And then when all the other people saw these men being so brave, they said, yeah, I'm gonna be brave too. We're not gonna do it. And they chased the soldiers away and they chased them out of town. And at that point, Matityahu turned to his sons and he said, guys, we've gotta stop this. We've gotta fix it. So Shimon, he had five sons. There was Shimon, Judah, Yonatan, Yochanan, and Eliezer. And those five brothers, they were really good friends. Like maybe as five fingers, they're not much, but together they were really strong. So they were like, yeah, we're gonna fix this dad, don't worry. Well, actually they called him Abba, because that's how you say dad in Hebrew. So Judah and his brothers, they got everyone together and they said, okay guys, you know, come on friends, we're gonna all fight back got together. Some spears and some swords and some shields. And they gathered up a crew of all their friends and they said, we're going to be brave and we're going to fight back. We're going to, we're going to protect the land of Israel. So 
they start having all these little fights because they know, you know, they're not a big army, they're a little army, so they have to be really smart about it. So they'll see, you know, where they can come in and where they can attack and where they can win battles. And they start winning battles all over Israel. And eventually they get to Jerusalem and they have a huge battle. Because remember, Jerusalem's the like really important city. It's like the capital. And they win the battle and they kick all the Greeks out of Jerusalem and they say, go home, Greeks, get out of here. And they're so excited because they've won and this tiny little army won against the really, really big Syrian Greek army. And then they get to the temple and it just makes them so sad to see what has happened there. And they look around and they see all the beautiful things they had there broken or stolen. And they see pigs running around and everything's dirty and it's gross and they think, oh, this is so sad. But they say, no, we are brave, we are winners, we're gonna do this. And they get everyone together and everyone puts down their swords and they pick up a broom and they pick up a mop and they clean out the whole temple and they clean everything up and they start fixing the things that are broken and they start putting it back together until the temple is beautiful. And one of the things that they have at the temple is a menorah. So a menorah, it's not like the ones we have in our house. This was taller than me. This was so big and it was made of gold and it was beautiful. But they didn't use candles back then. They had to use oil to light the menorah. And they had to use a very special oil. It's called Kodesh, which means it's like been put aside and it's just for this and it's made super special and takes a whole week to make. And they didn't have any. They said, what are we gonna do? We're gonna have to wait a whole week. We cleaned up everything. We really wanna light this menorah so we can feel like this is our place so we can rededicate it, which is actually where the word Hanukkah comes from. It means they want to make it new and special again. So they all go searching, they're looking around, they're looking around, they're looking around, and finally, they find a tiny, tiny, tiny bottle of oil. And they go, well, it's only enough for one day, but what can we do? We're gonna, we're gonna light the, men the menorah, and then in a week we'll light it again when we have time to make the oil. So they pour the oil into the menorah, and they light it up, and they say the blessing, and they're so happy. And then they come back the next day and it's still burning. And they go, what? This is amazing. And then they come back the next day and it's still burning. And they go, what? It burned for two days, three days, four days, five days. That special little bottle of oil burned for eight days, which was just enough time for them to make some new oil so they could keep lighting the menorah. And that's why we celebrate Hanukkah for eight days because that little, little bottle of oil could do it and so can we. So I hope you guys have fun lighting your Hanukkah tonight and that you have a wonderful holiday celebrating with your friends and feeling brave that you can do all these things that are special and Jewish. Excellent.